today is part two of automating your life. We're going to be diving further into some automations that are practical for your life and that you should be using and considering putting in your home and your smart home. Now, these are some automations that I personally use, as well as some ideas, things to keep in mind when building out your automations. What's really awesome is one of these automations, somebody even commented on just the other day. So everybody loved the automations and automating your life. So we're going to start a series on building out automations, things you can think about and what you should be implementing. So let's dive into automations and what to do. Here we are in Home Assistant. I've got a blank template set up for an automation. And the first one I want to cover is an automation that somebody commented about just the other day. What they said was if they went into a room and they had a contact sensor on that door, the contact sensor opens, the light turns on, but they also have an automation to turn off the light whenever the door closes. How do you prevent the light from turning off? The simple one is you could set a delay, but at some point that light's going to turn off and you have to open the door, close it again to get it to reset the automation. The other thing to do is to add a motion sensor into your automation or into that room. So let's show you how you would build this out. Automation one is going to be turning on the light. So the thing we want to do is at first add the device that we want to trigger the initial automation. The contact sensor I have right now that we can utilize for this is my armoire sensor. So we're just going to utilize this for fun. So now that we have the armoire sensor there and it's set to open, then we're going to set a to then do. So as simple as turning on a light, we're going to use our garage lights. So we're going to do garage lights and we're going to turn on garage lights and we're going to set the brightness to 100 and we're going to save. Then we're going to give it a unique name. It's as simple as that. That automation alone will then cause it to trigger. So we're going to whenever you enter the room, your light will turn on. From there, you build a second automation. So let's get a new blank template. Now we want to trigger the automation to turn off when that sensor is closed. So we're going to set up a when. So same device. So we're going to do that armoire sensor. But this time we're going to do when closed. Now you could automatically set that timer so you can add a five minute delay if you wanted to, if you felt that was necessary, just as an additional precaution to prevent it from turning off immediately when it's closed. But we're going to leave it because at sometimes maybe we're opening up the door, putting something in there. We're not going to cross the motion sensors path and then we're going to close the door. We want that light to turn off immediately. Now, the second level we're going to add is the motion sensors. First thing we're going to do is add the building lock block. So we want to add an and situation. So the reason why we add an and is it's saying if the sensor is closed and it's not detecting motion. So we're going to hit add. We're going to do our device and we're going to do our garage motion sensor. So not detecting motion. And this is where it's key that you add a three minute or multi minute timer. So in this case, I like about two minutes and 30 seconds is about what I like to do. So we're going to add two minutes and 30 seconds. And we're going to do that same thing, device, and then we're going to do garage, if I can spell the word garage, lights, and we're going to turn off the garage lights, hit save, and then we're going to add a name again. This is also a good place to add a description, describe in there what this automation is doing. So if you ever go back in the future and you don't remember what it was exactly set up for, you can do that through here and you can read the brief description as to why you set that automation up and what it was doing. So what these two are going to do for you is it's going to turn on the lights when that contact sensor is open. But whenever the contact sensor closes, it's going to try to turn off the lights. But if your motion sensor is detecting motion, then it's not going to turn them off because it has to have both conditions built into place. It will only turn them off if it's closed and the motion sensor has not detected any motion. Here we are with another blank slate automation. Here's one that's also pretty simple. So whenever we want to turn off a light, we want to add a motion sensor. So I have my kitchen motion sensor, for instance, and whenever it starts or it stops detecting motion. And again, I like that 
two minute, 30 second range is about what's pretty comfortable for me. Then I want it to now turn off my kitchen lights. So what's really cool is you can set up a room. And what I'm doing here is actually setting it up to turn off kitchen. This is also my kitchen camera, not my kitchen lights not the room like I was thinking it was going to be. <laughs> but basically, you would set it to turn off the kitchen. So in some cases, I have turned on multiple lights in my kitchen before, but I need to make sure that whenever it turns off my kitchen cans, so turn off kitchen cans, I also need to make sure that it turns off my left island light and my right island light. So in this case here, when the motion sensor triggers to turn off lights, it's going to turn off multiple lights, not just one. Because I could have multiple lights on there, but a lot of times what I do is I have it uh, motion sensor set up to only trigger one light. So right here, my, my kitchen cans, so cans are the can light bulbs. Um, I have it set up so that only between a certain time of day does it actually work. So if the motion sensor detects motion, and it's between at after 7 a.m. before 9 p.m., then it's going to trigger to turn on. Because after 9 p.m., a lot of times we're watching TV, it's kind of the calm down time. I don't always like the lights to just automatically be turning on at those times. Then it's going to turn on my kitchen cans. Well, if I've been in my kitchen cooking or something, and it's still between, or it's any time really, it's going to trigger to turn them off. I don't want just my kitchen cans turning off and then having left my island lights on. So I actually have my automation for turning off my kitchen cans to be set to both. So keep that in mind, how many lights are actually smart lights in your house or in that room when you're triggering automations to turn lights off. Another fun automation that I have here is my master bedroom. So a lot of times in the middle of the night, especially in the summertime, it gets really hot in the bedroom, but it's not always hot when we first enter the bedroom. So what I have is that if my master bedroom thermostat reaches a specific temperature after a certain time of night, so after 10 p.m., then it's going to turn on the master bedroom fan. So at a certain, the fan will turn on and at a certain speed, 50% is what I have it set to turn on to. What's really great is I cannot tell you how many times I wake up in the middle of the night super hot. And so what I do is I have this set for these nights so that now I can easily turn on the, the fan in the middle of the night and I don't wake up super hot anymore. So things to think about is you can also use your thermostats, which teaser next video is thermostats coming up. You can use your thermostats to even trigger automations. A few things I do want you to keep in mind when it comes to building out your automations, though, is you want to create a fail safe. You want to make sure that there's an ability to override the automation or still utilize manual control with your switches whenever you're utilizing these automations. For instance, the motion sensor that I have in my kitchen is pointed to one entrance of my kitchen. I have two entrances. I have two light switches on either side and I can still override to turn off or turn on the light switch through the, or through the, turn the lights on through the light switch, but the motion sensor can still trigger to turn on the lights for me or turn them off. Some situations, motion sensors and presence sensors don't always trigger right away, so it's nice to be able to have access to those switches to turn on those lights sooner than what you would expect. The delays are super important as well because you want to be able to have that ability to, if motion stops, that you have an enter to re-enter those motion detectors and still be able to make sure that they turn on or turn off without immediately hacking. That's pretty much going to be it for automations today. I just wanted to show you a couple things that I do in my personal home when it comes to building out automations. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it and you like automations, drop a comment down below what your favorite automation is. Tell me something. Tell me a trick that you use or something that you've done in your own home. I want to implement it too. I'd love to hear what your favorite automation is. Tell me down in the comments below. Also, take a moment, hit that thumbs up button, share this with a friend, hit the subscribe button. I cannot explain to you how, how important it is to me that you guys give me feedback through those ways and how important it is and how much it does for this channel. Thank you guys again for joining me again as i mentioned the next video is going to be thermostats we're getting close to the end building out a smart home hope to see you guys in the next video we'll see you later Bye bye